No Jumber, coolest podcast in the world. And basically, this conversation was prompted, and I have to give a shout out to my boy Tommy G, because he recently went and did a video with the guy sitting across from me, Rondo. And he said it in the video, and then I believe he also texted it to me or called me and told me that out of all the hoods he'd been to all over the world, all over the United States at the very least, that you guys were arguably the craziest slash. I mean, I'm sure he found out about a bunch of stuff that he didn't talk about on camera, but he basically left more impressed slash freaked out by you guys than anybody else that he's ever done content with, which is saying a lot because the guy basically runs a YouTube channel where he goes to a different crazy ass area every single week. No, yeah. Um, it was a lot of sh at the cut and he saw a lot of a couple of things, not too much, like a, like one percent of the shit that we do behind the scenes. Um, I don't know. We not a gang. We don't we don't clarify. We not a gang. We, we don't do none of that little. You know, we move as a family. We're a family. We're a brand. We're a business. We're businessmen. You mm -hmm. know? And uh, we don't like to do too much talking. You know, I would have never took that interview from Tommy G because we don't like that type of light. Mm -hmm. You know, that type of spotlight brings in Rico cases and all this type of... But well, how'd you get connected? Well, it's because the music. That's the only reason that okay. I even accepted the videos because, we, you know, the publicity for the music You knew it was shining a light on you. Yeah, but uh, one of the fans had uh, sent him a text message. I mean, sent him an email, and he had got back to me, and then we got on a call, and uh, we scheduled everything. And you ended up feeling like he was trustworthy? Tommy G? Yeah. Uh, it was, it was a little skeptical, but me and the homies, we got together and we like, uh, talked about it. I mean, he's gone through it with me and told me that he will send a video back and forth to the people that he filmed with over and over and over, blurring out different little things that they don't want in the videos and stuff like that. So he seems like he goes really, really hard to oh. not f*** anything up for people. Bro. I got a lot of love for him, bro. When I, when I met him in person, like, I thought he would be just like a personality for the camera or like... Oh, he just acts like this on camera, but he's actually like that in person. He's, he's like genuinely cool and he's nice to everybody. He's chill. And he always has like the questions coming like mm -hmm. off the top of his mind. Like he'll never let something get dry. Very genuine and curious and just kind of goes into these environments that he has no business being in. And he <laughs> just has like a good attitude about it. And he asks genuine questions and people open up because they know and they understand that he doesn't really come from this world and he doesn't really know about this stuff, but that he's, he's interested. Yeah. But uh, it was like a little common misconception in the video. Uh, people was thinking we from Fremont. We's not from Fremont. That's just where the food was. They got good food. Okay. You know, uh, most people they they like they claim cities. We don't claim cities. We we be from everywhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of the homies, they're from my like South Hayward, Hayward, uh, San Jose. Me personally, I'm from Union City. Mm -hmm. We don't really claim cities. We just get together. You know, we got each other's backs. We do our business. So normal gang stuff or street stuff usually gets associated based on uh, neighborhoods and stuff like that. But your thing is more about the ethnicity or the nationality. We're just family. But yeah, it's not a gang, but I like to kick it around. My but own that's how, how you guys know each other and so everything. Even him, he's he's half Afghan. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why we bring it around. Right. Because the video, I think. T tagged you guys as just like Afghan gangs, right. which I, I'm trying not to use the word gang, but it's right. it's proving kind of difficult because that is what he named the video. That's what he named it, but if you want to call it that, that's what you could call it because that's your opinion. Right. And you can say it all you want. I'm just quoting podcast. Tommy. No, yeah, no, I'm, I don't got a problem with you saying it, but me personally, like, you don't I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a gang. We're a tribe. Right. Yeah, we're, we're a family. My bad, I forgot the question you asked. <laughs> um, no, I just the, when he he labeled it like an Afghan gang. What specifically, like where where is your family lineage come from, and how like do you know how long your family has been in the United States and everything? No, yeah. So we we do only kick it around Afghans. Um, just cause of like uh, I'll get into explaining that. Just remind me, but mm -hmm. yeah, my family they're all from Afghanistan. They came from war. They came. Uh, I think my pops like came in like the eighties mm -hmm. and. Uh, then my mom came in like the '90s or 2000s. I'm not sure, but yeah, they come. They come from the land. You know, all the homies. We're all first generation Americans. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, what what kind of work did your parents go into when they came out here? Uh, they went through a lot of stuff. We never really had money at some point. Like uh, my dad was a hot dog vendor, and mm -hmm. he was uh, driving taxi and little stuff that didn't make too much money. And uh, you know, sometimes like. Uh, 
the lights would go out and a little stupid stuff like that. But he tried his best. He provided, you know, he uh, he put all that street shit aside and, and manned up. You know, he got married and had kids and he, he tried to switch his life around. Mm -hmm. And what was your relationship with him? Uh, I love my dad. Right. I love my dad. He's so funny, bro. Did he try to keep you out of like crime and street stuff? My dad is a good guy, you know. He uh, he did his best for everything. Um, it's just like um, I don't know, bro. He he was good. He he told me to stay out of the stuff. He told me not to do this stuff. He always gives me warnings and stuff like, don't do this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. he, he keeps me laced up with information. Definitely, that's good to hear. Um, and so, okay, how did you, like when did you hop off the porch, as they say? <laughs> I never hopped off the porch. <laughs> I mean, when did you start? Like, I feel like there's a distinct part of your life where you're a kid, and then there's like I when you start becoming a man. I was always a badass kid. Bro. I was always a bad kid. Really? From elementary, I was getting expelled from elementaries, expelled from middle schools, expelled from high school. Was, I was just like uh, they call it in Farsi, like I was a short ass kid. You know what I mean? I was hella bad, mm -hmm. hella energy, always like wanting to break shit, like fuck some shit up, always fighting. That was that's one of the most things I always got in trouble. My whole life, I always liked fighting. That was like my favorite thing to do. Mm. Fight, fight, fight. Really? Like about what kind of stuff? It's bullshit. Just like just fight. You know, like not not verbal fight, like physical fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like w I, within your friend group, or do you have ops already at that point? No, it's just over little arguments. You know, just like if somebody like says some stupid shit, just fly on them. Some um, I don't know if like people would be always like talking on the net, so we'd go pull up on them and. The thing about us, bro, we always run fair one. We never jump nobody. We don't do no jump. If somebody calls out once, each of the, all the homies is good at hands, bro. We all got hands. We all got good ground game, you know. It comes with that against. They know how to fight on the ground, too. Like, we don't we don't really wrestle. Like, if you've seen in the video, we don't we don't really do, like, the wrestling. But we, we, we decent at it, like, naturally. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, they call in Afghanistan, like, Polo Oni. What's that mean? Like, wrestling. Like, wrestlers. Like, you'll see, like, uh, if you watch videos in Afghanistan, like, they just like it's it's not technique, it's just all strength. Right. They'll just like wrestle each other off just pure strength, trying to like pull each other down and shit. Interesting. So w when did you like start getting arrested or having that kind of shit happen to when you were younger? Uh like 14, 14, 13, 14. What kind of stuff are you getting into? Uh armed arm robbery. Um Who put you onto that? I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got arrested for it. Yeah, I, I've been arrested. They might have been misled, but uh, what really nobody happened? put me on to nothing. But uh, I've had arrests. I've I've gotten caught up for like uh, like vehicle stolen vehicles, like gun charges, and all this type of stuff. But yeah, just have, just like the simple shit. And so, like, was your friend group at that time the people that you're friends with now, or did that come together later? I've known I've known my homies for a long time. Some people like. I came a little newer, but like not new within like a year, but like the past two years and stuff. But uh, it wasn't a lot. Like we even had a bigger group back then, but a lot of the people fell off. Like it wasn't like no, like we was like in one big clique. It was just like we was all mutuals type. Shit, like and uh, like hell shit happened and we fell out. But the people they're kind of like scary as too. So hell is scary. <laughs> hell is scary. Meaning you start. Getting into stuff and then they just kind of bail out before yeah. things are done. Yeah, they, they don't know how to handle business. Really? Yeah. And were we talking about just <laughs> issues with other people, or were you getting into like actual business, making serious money at this point? See, the difference between like uh, the Afghans in the street and all these other people is we about the money. Hmm. We about the money, huh? You know what I mean? Like it's we put all the beefs to the side. For, we got beefs. Like when it comes down to taking care, of, take care. Of, but our main priority is money. Like mm -hmm. we running after money. We got different ways of running up money. Money is the motive. We're trying to make money. Cause that's like the stereotype or the idea that the average person who lives in a city has about like people who, you know, like there's just certain businesses that it feels like people from your side of the world kind of end up dominating. Like uh, dominating what? It, just in terms of business, like, you know, but then you're, probably more tapped into the street side of things, which I don't really know about in terms of like uh, people making money in that way. People act like, like based on hip hop and stuff, you would kind of think that most crime was not committed by your race. Cool. We keep it real low key. It's real low key. <laughs> <laughs> I, we don't talk about, we don't post nothing. We don't do nothing. We just, 
keep it low key. We, we don't work with too many people. We st- keep it like, tight, like like the Italians in the nineties. Mm. Yeah, I don't keep know what that means. The, uh, we keep it amongst the Avians. Yeah. Mm. 